Hey, we're here. It's me and Matt and Killer Kyle and a little bit of the bubbly. And before we get started on the premiere episode of uh, Wheels of Fury, yes, this is the premiere episode. We did it. We had NXT and the debut of AEW Dynamite. And of course, tonight's SmackDown, which I could finally get on my TV. So Kyle and I are going to watch it. Yeah, it should be good. There is one thing that I thought of that is interesting and it's kind of seemed to have been foreshadowed. Okay, the big thing. Wednesday night, NXT head to head with AEW Dynamite. Brand Supremacy, Wednesday Night Warfare, who's going to win? Is it going to be NXT? Is it going to be AEW? Which of the two is going to be better? And who's going to have the higher ratings and all this other stuff? When in reality, wrestling's wrestling, who cares? Wrestling rules. Aside from that, yes, you've got NXT and AEW kind of opposite each other on Wednesday nights. The thing that seems to be overshadowed is the fact that on Fridays, yeah, SmackDown just moved to Fridays. They're premiering on Fox in the US. And they're still going to be on Sportsnet and Sportsnet 360 here in Canada. But how about SmackDown opposing Impact on Friday nights. Oh, yeah. Forgot about that. I mean, yeah, there's a whole thing with Impact and Monday Night Raw going head to head kind of a few years ago, and that abruptly came to an end. I don't know if it was because of ratings or because people complained about Impact being on Mondays instead of Thursdays, whatever it was. But yeah, you've got NXT and AEW on on the same time and opposite channels on Wednesdays. But then you're going to have Impact and SmackDown at the same time. One on the Fight Network, one on uh, Sportsnet 360, Sportsnet or Fox, whichever. I guess it's not really that important, but it's kind of like there's been so much focus put on AEW and NXT on Wednesday, that kind of battle on Wednesdays. Yeah, they've talked a lot about SmackDown being on Fridays, which is great. But it's just like, there is that little rehash of history, if you will, Impact and SmackDown on the same night as well. But, you know. Could be either way. <laughs> yep, no, I agree. AEW Dynamite was awesome. And like I said, with SmackDown, I'll be watching that later on tonight. And Wheels of Fury is going to be Hell in a Cell. Yes. Yes. The debut of the new uh, Wheels of Fury. Hey, Coming at you. Hello, Kyle. <laughs>
Hey, me and Matt here, and this is Killer Kyle, and and this is only like this is set up we wanted for the new season, uh, Wheels of Fury, but fuck it. It'll have to do for now. Yeah. A little pissed off right now because old man Vince didn't repair his matches very well for Hell in a Cell. This has probably been the hardest preparation we've ever done for a protection video for us because they've got basically three matches advertised on their card yeah. and that's it so it's basically a guessing game as to what the rest of the matches will be for the card yeah so I found fucking matches that could happen Pictures, but well, whatever. I found matches that could happen, so if they happen, they happen. If they don't, they don't. I just don't fucking care. And, I mean, if you don't fucking care, Vince, I don't fucking care. You know, all the wrestling's gonna beat your ass, you know. That's all there is to it. I won't say the SmackDown. Well, SmackDown was awesome. Yeah, I think that was very cool, but it's just like, you know. Okay, I don't even remember. I had it in my fucking head, you know. Yeah. Oh, it was well last year at Manhattan Center, and they had to fucking have to go home show at the Barclays, so they did a switch order. And this isn't exactly like that, but you would think you would have other matches for your show, because I know that people are gonna go and are gonna sit there and are gonna click on the TV and are gonna watch like Hell in the Cell. And what, they're going to have three matches? Like, two hours long? I don't understand. I don't think. There's no fucking way you can stretch three matches into two, three, four hours. It's impossible. So it's probably going to be one of those things where... <laughs> watch it. I was thinking myself that maybe for Hell in a Cell either on my YouTube channel or maybe I'll go live on YouTube or do a Facebook live something along those lines yeah we can do that too and do basically like you see Cultaholic do or Wrestle Talk do or what culture do kind of like a, wrestling with regret a live reactions and projections as well as watching hell in a cell right i don't yeah. know i guess that's kind of why you, you wouldn't think to look at your pay-per-view that's gonna be this sunday yeah i mean They've hyped up Seth Rollins and Bray Wyatt really well. They've hyped up Becky Lynch and Sasha really well. They've hyped up another match really well, the third match really well. Yeah. Other than that, it's like, well, what else you got? <sighs> yeah, I don't know. And yeah, I don't really think it has anything to do with it, but it's almost like because there is so much focus on, you know, Raw, going to USA, SmackDown, going to Fox, NXT, two full hours on USA, <laughs> Hell in a Cell kind of was an afterthought. I, I get what you're saying. You know, I've never seen WWE be this sloppy before. Yeah. Like, it's not a big four pay-per-view, but it's like one of your biggest pay-per-views of the year. Right, yeah. And you have three matches advertised and highly talked about, but as for, like, matches for the pre-show the rest of the card it's up in the air yeah 
Pretty much. <laughs> it's basically a to be determined. Yeah. Or to be announced. Whatever. So we can only do our best. You know. And I mean, this is going to be a first for us. Whatever fucking happens, happens. Because we can't fucking be mind readers and, and do a fucking review. But like, we ha we're going to have to. This isn't, you know, a very good premiere show for us. Yeah, I know. But, I mean, we gotta wait to do Bad Blood. Yeah. So we might as well see what we can do with this clusterfuck. I mean, we've done videos before with very little information, but we've had something to go off of. This is just like... Horse shit. <laughs> yeah. So... Sadly, but here we go. Alright, so let's start off with Becky Lynch versus Sasha Banks for the Raw Women's Championship. Yeah. That was a pretty good feud. Yeah. And like I said, you know, in the last one, I thought the four horsewomen of wrestling were joined together again, just like NXT days. But that didn't happen, so I mean, Sasha Banks is one of those female wrestlers anyway that I could really care less about. Yeah. It's unfortunate, but I think that she's definitely... I don't know. I mean, she's only had, like, maybe two or three good matches. Yeah. I mean, somebody on one of the Facebook pages said that she hasn't really had the main event of a show, and I'm like, bullshit, she has. Yeah, she's had several main events for shows. Yeah, yeah, you got, you know, her match with Bailey at the Iron Woman match. You've got... Mm -hmm. The Falls Count Anywhere match on Raw with mm -hmm. Charlotte. Mm -hmm. And so she she's proved herself in that sense. I don't see her as... One, well, she's not one of my favorites anyway. Now, Becky Lynch definitely proved herself over the years. Mm -hmm. She came in as the Irish stereotype. And yes. then changed her image. And then she... Basically, yeah, I don't know if she won the NXT Divas Championship or women, whatever. The NXT Women's Championship? Yeah. I don't believe Becky ever did, no. So, I mean, yeah, and then she goes over to, to SmackDown, then Raw, and she's, you know, WrestleMania, there is you go. There is mm -hmm. that whole thing where she beat Ronda Rousey and Charlotte. In the main event, yeah, you're gonna say it was bullshit. Well, no, she won the match. She became double champion. I would have expected two separate women's title matches, but whatever. So I mean, there is that. So the thing about that is, okay, it was cool having Becky win that match, and you know, her calling herself Becky Two Belts and all that other stuff. But as far as the defenses of those titles went, it was kind of like, oh, we'll defend the Raw Women's Championship here. We'll defend the SmackDown Women's Championship here. So you held the belts for a little bit. And then all of a sudden, it just faded away into nothing. Yeah. A history-making moment that had an anticlimactic finish. You Pretty much, yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's not taking anything away from Becky. Becky's a great performer. Mm, yes. You know, the man, no, she's over, she's the man, she's still the Raw Women's Champion. All this other stuff, it just seems to be, for such a history-making moment, Yeah. they would have ran with it a little more and did a little more with it, but, you know. I will say this about Sasha, she's very much aggressive yeah. than she was before. Yeah, she's more aggressive than she was before. She's got that attitude of like, you know, I want to be the best. I want to be on top. I want to be the women's champion. I want to take down the champion and all this other stuff, which is great. Right. So, yeah, I mean, 
despite all that, I'm still gonna say Becky. I think Sasha needs to, because remember, she just came back. Oh yeah. And she's been targeting Natty, so... I still think that maybe one more pay-per-view before she can actually recapture the Raw Women's Championship. Mm -hmm. To me, it seems like the rivalry between Sasha and Natalia was a short one. Right. They had Sasha attack Natalia, and Baggy came out. Then they did a series with Sasha and Natalia. Now they've got Baggy going with Sasha, and they've got Natalia doing a feud with. Lacey Evans right now, so I don't know if they're gonna go back to Sasha and Natalia or it was like okay we we had Sasha and Natalia finish their thing, we can focus on Sasha and Becky and have Natalia go off and do something else. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, so that being said, I'm gonna still say Becky. Yeah, I mean, can Sasha be a champion again? For sure, barring none. Is it her time yet? Not likely, not right now. I'd say give it till maybe Survivor Series and then put a strap on her. Yeah, for sure. But right now, I think Becky will retain. Yeah. So that being said, let's go now to the take team match. You've got the team of Daniel Bryan and Roman Reigns. Mm -hmm. Versus the Bludgeon Brothers, aka the Metal Gods. Luke Harper and Eric Rowan. Yes. Yeah, this rivalry came about actually really well. At first, it was kind of like, okay, you've got somebody attacking Roman Reigns and the automatic. Suspect yeah. was Daniel Bryan or Eric Rowan. They threw in this plot twist, if you will, with this Eric Rowan lookalike, with that fizzled out quick. Mm -hmm. And then find out, okay, it was Eric Rowan that did it. And, you know, they go off and running with that. But then here comes Luke Harper back into the fold and into the picture, if you will. Which, nothing wrong with that. It kind of doesn't make any sense, but... Hey, there is still quite a bit in WWE that doesn't make sense right mm -hmm. now. Yeah, for sure. But, I mean, hell, Harper and Rowan together are fantastic. So, having those two guys together is pretty cool. Yeah. And then, you know, have Daniel Bryan be like... Rowan, I'm your friend. What are you doing? Stop it. You know, why are you doing this? And then proverbial, for, proverbial, <laughs> however that fucking word is, slap the taste out of his mouth. And then Rowan put Brian through a table with a brain claw slam. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, actually, I thought it was a bit risky because of Brian, but whatever. Proverbial, there you go. And, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I just talked to Kyle about it. You know, the match between Roman and Brian in 2015's Fast Lane was very good. Yeah, that was really, really good. And, you know, the fact that that whole year, you know, everyone was hot for Roman. They wanted Roman to be in the spotlight. It was either... Oh no, it was Roman. Yeah, pretty much. So, unfortunately, it didn't happen. So, I mean, you know, 
Well, actually, yeah, it did happen. We had Roman versus Lesnar. Yeah. So, I mean, there is that. And I think that Brian obviously went on to win and then surrender the Intercontinental title. Mm hmm. But, you know, that match was really good. So, I mean, they definitely have good history there. And I think that they're teaming up together would be pretty cool. I mean, you got Roman, who's the powerhouse also. Yeah, he can fly as well. You know, as big as he or tall as he is. Yeah. You know, then you got Daniel Bryan, who's definitely the flying goat, if you will. Yeah. And, well, I mean, he doesn't really do that that much anymore, but yeah. he's still a very good technician. Yeah. So, I think those two would be great. And then you got Eric Rowan and Luke Harper, who have been together for a very long time. Oh, yeah. So, they know their shit, too. Mm -hmm. I think that this is going to be an interesting match. I don't know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. I don't know how... It's going to work out. I mean, I think Brian's going to keep being a face. Yeah. So there's always that heel turn, but I don't know. That's the thing. So, I mean, I wonder if the Bludgeon Brothers are going to win. Yeah. I just don't know. Yeah. I mean, this one's one of those things where it's like... If you have Rowan and Harper win, it could push them to the next level. If you have Roman and Brian win, maybe could extend this rivalry out a little bit longer and yeah. then, you know, so end it somehow. But yeah. to call a winner right now? Ooh. Yeah, that's going to be difficult, because, yeah. I mean, Brian and Eric are no longer a team, so it's going to be interesting to see how Roman and Brian work out together, because yeah. we were just watching SmackDown. Yep. Pretty interesting. But they shook hands after a match, so it's like, yeah, they're on the same page. Yeah. Sure. So, yeah, I mean, this is up in the air. I don't know. Yeah. So, I guess, you know, that's basically it. But, we obviously saw spoilers on the internet. At least, I hope, anyway. So, let's just do it. You've got the Intercontinental Championship with... Ali and Nakamura. Yeah. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know how you feel about Sami Zayn. Yeah. But I think having Nakamura as the champion a little bit longer, that's great, in my opinion. Yeah, he won the U.S. title, and it didn't really go very well. Yeah. Well, at least with the Intercontinental title, you know. And, like... I've said many times, you have the IWGP Intercontinental Championship when you have the WWE Intercontinental Championship. And it's like, that's pretty cool in, in itself. Now, with Ali, he's only been on Raw for a little while, at least. Yeah. So I'm wondering how they're going to make that work. I mean, I think maybe, like I said, another match with Sasha and Becky. Oh, yeah. You know, another match will be fine in a, a long run to have mm. Ali capture the Intercontinental title. Yeah. But for now, I think Nakamura is going to win. That's just my opinion. You know, we'll see how that goes. I said to Matt when we were watching SmackDown, Shinsuke Nakamura had a match against uh, Seth Rollins. And I said to Matt, do you, 
Do Shinsuke Nakamura and Sami Zayn remind you of that one bit from the Looney Tunes with the bulldog and the Jack, Jack Russell. Russell? Yeah. Walking down the street and the Jack Russell's bouncing all around the bulldog. You're the best. You're the greatest. You're going to win. Whatever. And you backhand them. Right, boss. Sorry, boss. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's... That's kind of... Just about Sami Zayn and Nakamura to a T. I mean, Nakamura still has that essence about him yeah. where he does this and has the energy and all that other stuff. But, like, Sami Zayn... Fuck, he looks like he has, like, five cups of coffee yeah. before he goes out. Five cups of coffee, six Red Bull. Yeah. Yeah. Before he goes out to the company, knock him more to the ring, just, you know, bouncing out, you know, jumping up and down, and just a bundle of energy. And yeah. Then, good lord. A couple lines. But yeah, so I think that this match will go to Nakamura. I mean, as much as I like Ali, it's just not time yet. Yeah. I mean, he will have a championship eventually, maybe. In the next pay per view, but I don't see it now. Yeah, I mean, Ali hasn't really done very much performance-wise. I mean, they did have him doing these vignettes talking about you know? being a, a vigilante and trying to inspire people and lift people up and yeah. have them follow his lead and you know, don't be a criminal or whatever. Yeah. And he's had a few matches, but as far as, like, saying, oh, he's definitely gonna number one guy for a start at the Intercontinental Championships, like, this is just kind of out of nowhere. I mean, will it be a good match? Sure. Will it be exciting? Yeah. Will it be entertaining? Yeah. Is it Ali's time yet? Give him some time. Give him some more matches. Do more work with him. Yeah. And build up this character. If it is truly a character of like. The leader. And you know. the Do the right thing. And follow my example. And all this other stuff. And then work him into a title. Match. Against. Nakamura or AJ Styles or whatever just I mean I'm sure it'll be a great match Timing is just off pretty much. So there is another match that Because we're trying to figure out the tag teams. I am not even sure who's gonna face Yeah, who the, the hell would they have possibly challenge the revival or Rude and Ziggler? Yeah because you've got the Raw Take Team Championships, and then you got the SmackDown Take Team Championships, and I thought I saw a potential match, but I'm not quite sure. So I honestly don't know. I mean, yeah. we can make it up, but I just don't know. Yeah, exactly. There's the Cruiserweight Championship match that's in consideration, I'm sure. Probably. It's Drew Gulag versus Alberto Carrillo. Oh, yeah, yeah, maybe, yeah. Now, you know, we could say the same thing about him. He's not ready yet. I mean, and that's another thing. You look at the lineage, the legacy of his family. Hector Garza, Hector Garza Jr. Hmm... I have no clue. Mm -hmm. You know, Angel Garz is actually on NXT. Yes. So, I mean, you look at that family and you go, yeah, there is legacy. There is there is something there. Uh, the fact of the matter is, I think that, yeah, he could be. Because I've seen him wrestle. It's very good. You know, there's potential there. But I still think that Drew Gulag is one of the best on 205. Well, he is one of the best cruiserweights there is. Oh yeah, for sure. He's definitely come a long way from being Captain PowerPoint. Yeah. 
and you know wanting to show a PowerPoint presentation and having 200 slides or 250 slides, whatever it was, and never being able to get through them all. I mean, they had a run with Drew Gulak and Brian Kendrick. Yeah. With a rivalry and, you know, Keck and Brian Kendrick out of the group and Brian Kendrick becoming a face and, you know, shaving his face and looking 20 years younger. Yeah. And being partnered with Akira Tozawa and there was Drew Gulak and Jack Gallagher and that rivalry went on for a little bit and then you know Gulak eventually wins the Cruiserweight Championship well he straightens up gets his shit together yeah. goes more aggressive more physical more in your face more intense and wins the cruiserweight championship and yeah he's just been on an absolute tear since so if that match does come up yeah gulag against korea 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 yeah the birth of korea it huh. should be a good one i mean there was a three-way match with korea gulag and i think it was grand match leak Oh, yeah. On 205. That was a really good match. Nice. Or, or was that a, a pre-show? I, I may have seen it, but I'm not quite sure. Yeah. It was really good. And so to have Korea and Gulak one-on-one, -on -one, it would be really good too. But yeah, I'd say more than likely Gulak would keep the title on that occasion. So now we go on to the SmackDown Women's Championship, which I do think will happen. Yes. Charlotte versus Bailey, and yeah. Uh, I mean, look, you had a take team match tonight. Charlotte and Becky versus, well, <laughs> Hug and Boss connection. Yeah. Okay, cool. Now Charlotte slapped the figure eight. On Bailey, so that obviously can mean two things. Bailey's gonna win, come hell in the cell, and or Charlotte might win, pull off a surprise. I have no clue. Right. And I don't like Charlotte, but I mean, I can't say that she's not going to win. Yeah. But I'm not sure. Now, one of these matches is gonna be a last woman or man standing so I'm not sure if it's this one now it's gonna be interesting nonetheless yeah for sure when Bailey won it was interesting because like Alexis it just won the money in the bank for the women's side yeah so I don't know I don't know how this is gonna turn out yeah, I mean, Bailey winning the Money in the Bank Lottie match this year. That's another notch in her belt. Then getting the SmackDown Women's Championship again. It's cool. She worked out well. This whole thing where she's trying to be an inspiration and yeah. I'm the good guy and all this other stuff. Well, she's way lead back in Shirley with the steel chair he's yeah. like okay you're making her a heel but you're having her come off as like no I'm the good guy and all this I'm not a bad guy at all and just kind of they're making her a heel but mm -hmm. not intentionally making her a heel in a way yeah no they're making her a heel but they're Trying to make it so that she doesn't come off as a heel, which is making her more of a heel. Yeah. But, I mean, Charlotte's won the Women's Championship nine goddamn times. Good she match. really doesn't need a tenth. So if this match happens again, 
I take Bailey. For awesome. sure. Alright, there you go. Now that, that just reminds me of a take team match that I saw could be in Hell in a Cell or on Hell in a Cell. <laughs> Gonna have to be the day. Yeah. And on it. Alexa and Nikki versus the Kabuki Warriors. Yeah, that could be interesting. I mean, yeah, I know the Kabuki Warriors haven't had too many matches mm. together, but the fact is, I could see them pull it off. I just wish that they had more matches to yeah. prove that they're that good. I know that they're good separately. Mm -hmm. We're not going to talk about Asuka's fucking career. Mm -hmm. And WWE, but yeah, I think they can be a very good take team if they were the take team champions. How long will it last? I don't know. I mean, Alexa and Nikki have really, and I know that I'm biased, but I think they've really shown that they could be a good female take team. Yeah, for sure. You know, the thing that is really interesting about the pairing of the Kabuki Warriors and you throw Paige in there as their manager all three of them at some point or another were NXT Women's Champion yeah. not only that Paige was the first Oscar was the longest yeah that is true although I don't know what's going on with Paige at this point because she's had surgery yes and she, well, she did do a talk show at some point, but I don't know. Mm. But, yeah, who knows if she'll be back. Yeah, depending on how long she's going to be out because of the surgery, we'll see. Yeah. So, with that being said, I see Alexa and Nikki retain the titles. Yeah, I mean... Asuka and Kyrie Sane are a good team together. They're absolutely fantastic together. They do need more matches. They do need an extended rivalry with somebody to get somewhere and then maybe lead into women's tag titles. Yeah. But for if that does happen, it, like, on the off chance that the Kabuki Warriors did win, fine, whatever, but more than likely, Nikki and Alexa would win. Now, that being said, who would you think that... Who would they have taken the titles off of Cross and Bliss? <clears throat> See, because of the fact that there really hasn't been very many women's tag teams challenge yeah bless and cross i mean they've had fire and desire but i think that rivalry's made it come, uh, to, uh, come to an end yeah yeah they, and you know they could like they have had a little bit with the kabuki warriors other than that like, I'm not sure when Nia Jax is supposed to return. Yeah, I know. Because I know Tamina's still on because of the whole bullshit with the 24-7 championship. True. Because of Kevin Bella winning it, so... Yeah. Not quite sure where that's gonna go, but I think there's gotta be some kind of women take team, you know, or just throw someone together. Like I said, you know, you got Shayna Baszler should come up with Jessamine Duke and Maria Schaefer. Yeah. You can have Maria and Jessamine challenge. Yeah, that could work. That could work. Who knows? I mean... Here's a good question for you. What the fuck happened to the Iconics? I'm not honestly sure, man. I, I know. That's something I just thought of. Like, they had the match at WrestleMania where they won. Then, you know, they defended the titles somewhat regularly. Lose the titles to Cross and Bliss. And they've poofed. 
Yeah, I don't know what's gonna happen to that. I mean, so and that's like as far as a women's tag division goes, it's almost non-existent, and that's unfortunate. I mean, that's the unfortunate part of bringing the women's tag team championships. You know, you don't have a steady women's tag team division, and that's not a fucking sexist remark. It's true. It's just the way it is. You don't have... That is not an insult, that is just a fact in life. Yeah! You don't have a lot of women wrestlers on a roster. Yeah. Unless you bring somebody up from NXT. Because... You got limited take teams. I shouldn't say you have limited wrestling women. Right. You have limited wrestling women take teams. You know, you've got a, a good roster of women on both shows, but as far as tag teams go, hell, they, I think they were a team for a little bit, and why not put them back together? Yeah. Carmella and Naomi. Yeah, that's an idea. I just fucking haven't seen Naomi in a long time either. No, not at all. So I have that. I was just thinking we were watching something on Wednesday and we saw Chelsea Green yes. and Rachel Ellering mm -hmm. and it's like I have no idea where Chelsea's going Yeah, because she's already appeared. I can't remember what pay-per-view it was. I, was it TakeOver Cardiff? It might have been TakeOver Cardiff so I'm not quite sure if she's gonna, when she's gonna wrestle. Yeah. Rachel Ellering, I'm not sure. That's the first time I've seen her. In a long time. Yeah, so I'm not quite sure. Yeah. But there's gotta be some kind of women's take team to take the titles. I'm not sure. Yeah. Otherwise, just fucking let it go. Mm -hmm. But anyways. I... So now, let's just talk about this. Now, we watched SmackDown. You saw the predictions for what was going to happen. Kofi was going to lose the title. So Brock Lesnar, but it fucking shouldn't have been that long. What was it? Half a second? No. Fuck, I don't believe that. Now, this was interesting, because I also saw this in a dirt sheet. Now, Cain Velasquez came out with Rey Mysterio. Yeah. And, I mean, I haven't seen him in a fight for... Uh, quite a while. Uh, and I know that he beat Brock at one point. Yeah. Just a fear in his face when he saw Cain coming out. Yeah. So... Yeah, you got Brock beating Kofi in that fast. And Brock's parading around the ring with the title. And yay, I won, whatever. And Rey Mysterio's music hits. is like, oh, great. Rey's going to come out and try and beat up Brock and get revenge on Brock for what happened to him and Dominic on Monday. All right, let's see this tragedy happen. And then lo and behold, Ray comes out with Cain Velasquez, and it's like, holy fuck. Yeah. Where the hell did he come from? Yeah, it's like I said, I haven't seen him in a, in a fight for I don't know how long. Now, there was another, well, I was a boxer. He was in the crowd. Yeah. And I guess he was taunted by Braun Strowman, <laughs> which I thought was weird. Like, yeah. That, that came the fuck out of nowhere. Yeah. Funny, yes. Didn't really make much sense, though. No, unless they're going to go somewhere with that, but I don't know. Maybe. But it'll be fun to see Cain Velasquez in the WWE. I mm. mean, another monster, but another monster face, I guess, if you will. Yeah. Because we really don't have any of those. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah, so I can't really think of anything else, other matches. I mean, I'm sure they'll be popping up when we're done, which will make this absolutely fucking pointless. In my yeah, opinion. basically. 
whatever it is what it fuck you Vince yeah so anyways this has been the season premiere of Wheels of Fury if you will I changed everything in uh, March and my way in a different spot in my room so there's yeah. we don't have the green screen up right now but I'm trying to figure out how to fix it and not quite sure I yeah. think these are actually twist offs yeah we're not seeing as how is the season premiere we yeah. do a little toast with somewhat bubbly a little bit of the bubbly yeah cool thanks for sticking with us for three years Nastrovia. Nastrovia. And. Yep, this is me, Matt, and Killer Kyle, and Miss Cleopatra. Yeah, watch your bottle doesn't overflow. And, uh, oh shit! Ha <laughs> ha! Take care. We will see you next week. Bad Blood 97. And after that, I thought we could do Fall Ball. I don't even remember when the last one was. Huh. Probably like 99 or something, maybe. Uh, let's do Fall Ball 94. Sure. And then the week after that, Halloween Havoc 1995. So anyways, like I said, I mean Matt, this is Killer Kyle, deuces, <coughs> bye yeah.